Good afternoon. We are going to do notes on Trig Point 19, which is the last section of the chapter. It's section 4.8. And we're going to go through some, some examples of the types of story problems you're going to be doing using trig functions. Mainly what you need to remember with these problems are that trig functions require right triangles. So when you're drawing your, your diagrams of the situation, uh, don't worry about things like this one's in a ship. Don't worry about like where on the ship they're measuring. Assume that the ship is a single point. Assume that the treasure is a single point. And um, you have to make assumptions, the fact that like water is parallel to the ocean floor. Otherwise, it wouldn't be possible to use trig functions at all. All right, so let's get into this. A ship's sonar locates a treasure chest at a 12 degree angle of depression. A diver is lowered 40 meters to the ocean floor. <laughs> Excuse me. How far does the diver need to swim along the ocean floor? That should be swim with an M <laughs> to get the, to the treasure chest. Okay, so we have a ship and the ship is on the top of the water. Right, so we've got our ocean and below the ship you have the ocean floor. And it says that at an angle of depression, now an angle of depression, remember, is measured from horizontal down. That's your angle of depression. So the angle of depression to the treasure, so here's your treasure, is 12 degrees. So if I draw a line from the ship to the treasure, the angle of depression to the treasure is 12 degrees. All right, then it says the diver is lowered 40 meters to the ocean floor. So we're assuming straight down 40 meters, which is, of course, perpendicular to the ocean floor. And we're trying to figure out how far the diver needs to swim along the ocean floor to get the treasure chest. So we're looking for distance x, basically. So right now I have two sides to it. I have one side to a triangle and an angle. And there's a couple ways you can do this. Um, one of them is by using the fact that alternate interior angles are congruent. So you assume that the ocean floor and the water are parallel. So alternate interior angles are congruent. That means that this is 12 degrees. That's one way to do it. You could also subtract from 90 and get the angle there. But I like 12 degrees because it's smaller. So now I need a function that's going to relate 12 to 40 and x. Well, 40 is opposite. x is adjacent. So maybe your first one is tangent. Tangent of 12 degrees is equal to the opposite, which is 40, over the adjacent. Now, the advantage of picking tangent versus cotangent is tangent is a button on your calculator, so it will be easier to calculate than having to switch it back around. So this is your basic setup. So now we need 12 degrees is not a memorized angle, so we're going to need to solve for x and then put it into our calculator. So to get x to the top, flippy step is probably a good choice. So x over 40 equals 1 over tangent of 12 degrees. Then I need to get x alone, so multiply by 40 over 1 on both sides. So x equals 40 over tangent of 12 degrees. Okay, so now we need to turn this into an actual decimal answer, because in real life, this is not an answer. So be sure checking mode that you are in, you are in um, degree mode. So there, now I'm in degree mode, quit out. And I'm going to go 40, and you can do this in one step or two, but I think it's easiest to do it in one. 40 divided by tangent of 12 degrees, close the argument. Most calculators will let you do that without putting parentheses around the tangent. And we get 188, 188.185. The original one was in meters, so this is in meters. And if we think about logically with meters, if you're any more than like a half a meter, you can't really measure that. So we're going to round this to 188.2 meters. That's how far your swimmer will have to go. OK, so that is one that uses water parallel to the ground. OK, let's flip the page. 
So our second problem says, from a point 80 meters from the base of a tower, the angle of elevation is 28 degrees. How tall is the tower? OK, so on this one, we have ground. We have our tower. Maybe our tower has windows in it. I don't know. But the important thing is, remember that you're only assuming a single point in space. So you pick the front edge. And it says, from a point 80 meters from the base. So from here out to here is 80 meters from the base. And we're going to make the assumption that the tower is perpendicular. It's not the leaning tower of Pisa. So from this point, 80 meters from the base of the tower, the angle of elevation, so angle of elevation, remember, is from the horizontal, and then you go up from there. So the angle of elevation, uh, so from a point of the angle of elevation to the top of the tower is 28 degrees. Okay, so from horizontal up is 28 degrees. How tall is the tower? So I'm looking for the height of the tower. All right, so the trig function that's going to get this done, I have opposite, I have adjacent, it's going to be tangent again. So tangent of 28 degrees equals the opposite, which is h, over the adjacent, which is 80. That's your beginning equation. Now, again, 28 is not one of our memorized angles, so we need to solve for h. We do this by multiplying by 80 over 1. The 80s cancel out. And so I have h equals 80 tangent of 28 degrees. All right, now we're ready to, that's an exact answer. With no calculator, that's as far as you could get. That would be your answer, which could happen on a test if it's a non-calculator test. We're going to go with a rounded answer, though. We're already in degrees. So we're going to do 80 times tangent of 28. We get 42.536 meters. So again, it makes sense to round to one decimal place. So the height is 42.5 meters when we round it. So this is rounded like on a calculator test. This is not rounded. This is exact answer like on a non-calculator test. So two different forms of the answer. All right, flip the page. Last one. From the top of a 100-foot tall building, a man observes a car moving toward the building. If the angle of depression of the car changes from 22 to 46 degrees during the period of observation, how far did the car travel? OK, so let's make a drawing for this one. All right, so we have a 100-foot tall building. And someone is standing up on that building. There we go. So here's our little person some windows. Got to have windows on the building. Okay, so this is a 100 foot tall building. From the top of the building, he observes a car moving towards the building. Okay, we'll put him here. If the angle of depression of the car changes from 22 degrees to 46. Okay, so angle of depression is measured from the horizontal. So we don't have a horizontal. We're out in space, so we're going to draw the horizontal in. This is a floating horizontal line to measure from. And that really gets people on these questions. They don't realize they're allowed to draw a horizontal line when they need to do an angle of depression. So the angle of depression to the first position was 22 degrees. Then it changed. So it's going, and remember the car was going towards the building. So at some point, it was closer to the building, and the angle of depression changed to 46 degrees. So we want to know how far does the car travel. So we're looking for x, which is this distance. We need to know how far it travels. OK, 
So the problem with x is it's not part of a right triangle. Um, so what we're going to have to do, because we, we need to incorporate this right angle in any equations that we do, we need to incorporate a different letter. I'm going to incorporate y so that we have a way to relate this big triangle to this little triangle. So just looking at the little triangle, let's draw that one out, the small triangle. It's a right triangle. It's got a 100-foot building on one side. Now, if this is 46, again, you can use alternate interior angle theorem, which I think works really well. So if this is 46, then that one has to be 46 degrees as well. So we have 46 degrees, and we have y. So two measurements and y. OK, now let's do the other right triangle that we've created, which is the larger one. So it is still a right triangle. It is still a 100-foot building. The difference is from here to here is y plus x, two distances together. And again, alternate interior angles are congruent. If this is 22, then this one has to also be 22. So we have a 22-degree angle. So there's a, like I said, there's a couple ways you can do this. Um, I guess for me, the easiest way I think would be to solve for y and then use y in this one and get this solution. So let's do the y first. I'm going to use red for this one. So opposite and adjacent, we're going to do the tangent of 46 degrees equals 100 over y. That's our equation. So doing flippy step. We have y over 100 equals tangent of, oh, sorry, 1 over, excuse me, 1 over tangent of 46 degrees. you got to flip both sides. Let me wipe that out. That's a 1. Here we go. And then multiply both sides by 100. You get y equals 100 over tangent of 46 degrees. Okay, running that through a calculator. You end up with 96.568877. Now remember, if you're going to use this number, which we are, you want to go six places at a minimum because you're going to use this number. OK, so now we've got that one. Now let's do the second triangle. It's still tangent. This time it's going to be tangent of 22 degrees equals opposite, which is 100, over adjacent, which is y plus x. There's our equation. Um, I think I'd like to get y plus x alone, so we're going to do flippy step. So I'm going to go x plus y over 100 equals 1 over tangent of 22. Multiply both sides by 100 x plus y equals 100 over tangent of 22. And ultimately, I want x. So I'm going to substitute this in for the y and then subtract it to the other side. So x equals 100 over tangent of 22 minus my y value, which is 96.568877. All right, so we're going to use a calculator. We're going to do this one first, and then we're going to subtract that one. So I'm in um, degrees already. So 100 divided by tangent of 22, close the 22, enter, minus, and here's your decimal, 96.568877. You get x equals 150.9398. Again, it's probably appropriate because we're talking feet, because the building height was in feet. Everything's in feet. So three rounds the 9 up to 10. So we end up with, when we round, 151.0 feet. And that would be your answer. So we created two triangles, one with the, whole, with the original position, x plus y, and the other one with just the y. And that allowed us to solve one for y. And then we were able to substitute that into the other one. So 
kind of an interesting problem. All right, that is the end of the notes today. I hope these are good patterns for you to follow on your homework. Have a great afternoon.